welcome. I'm Margaret, one of the worship leaders at St Stephen's. It seems like ages since I've been with you all, but I'm finally back from placement. In case you missed it last week, we're offering three options for worship during lockdown. First, you're very welcome to continue joining us for this short reflection each week on Facebook or YouTube. Or, if you're somebody who prefers a structured service with liturgy and plenty of hymns, you can join the Church of England services recorded from a different church each week. We've posted links to these on our Facebook page, it's well worth a look. And finally, we're holding a live Zoom service at 10am every Sunday. So if you'd like to see each other while you worship, please get in touch, Facebook or email, and we'll give you the details you need to join. It's a lovely way of sharing fellowship, and I promise you don't have to lead anything or even say anything at all if you don't want. There's absolutely no pressure. So on to today's reflection. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Today we're going to look at John chapter 1 verses 43 to 51 where he's calling some of his disciples. The next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. And when Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, He is truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you're the son of God, you're the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, today as we look at this passage, I want us to think about four things in particular. The first thing is the first verse, and it's so simple, we almost miss it. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip didn't find Christ, Christ found Philip. And so it is with us. We didn't choose God, God chose us. All through the Bible, we see a God who constantly seeks out his people. In the very beginning, in Genesis 3, Adam and Eve, they eat the forbidden fruit. They realise that they're naked and they hide in their embarrassment. But God is walking in the garden and in verse 9 calls Adam, Where are you? Right from the beginning, God has been seeking us out and drawing us to him. This is really important that we remember that we're chosen rather than the ones who choose because it keeps us humble before God. And once Jesus finds Philip, he gives him a single command, follow me. He's asking Philip to make Jesus his number one priority and Philip immediately follows leaving all else behind. The second thing I want us to notice is what Philip did when he set out to follow Jesus. He didn't race off to find a church, to get baptised or to sign up to an Alpha course, although all those elements have their place. According to John, he rushed to find his brother and friend Nathaniel and tell him about Jesus. How wonderful! Philip realises the importance of his encounter and he's desperate to share it. He's had no training, 
but he's still effective in bringing Nathaniel to Jesus. Too often we think that we can't tell others about Jesus because we don't have the right words or we don't know our Bibles well enough. Of course, training and reading our Bibles can help enormously, but we don't have to have theology degrees. We just need to be passionate for Jesus and the Holy Spirit will do the rest. Remember, the responsibility is not fully on us. I'd urge you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 3 if you have time. Verses 6 and 7 state, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. Thirdly, following Jesus means keeping on going, even if we meet resistance from others. When Philip goes to share the good news about Jesus, Nathaniel's response is less than enthusiastic. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip was so excited, so passionate about sharing his news, only to be met with cynicism. Sometimes when we try to tell people about Jesus, we're met with cynicism, apathy, or even rudeness and ridicule. It can leave us feeling rather discouraged and knock our self-confidence. But I love Philip's response, especially as a new follower of Jesus. He doesn't give up. Neither does he argue and get into a weighty theological debate about the geography of Nazareth or where it sits within the salvation history of Israel. He just gives a warm invite. Come and see. When it comes to evangelism, to sharing the good news, we don't need to get involved in heavy theological debates. We just need to invite people to come and see and trust God to do the rest. I know during lockdown, when our churches are closed for public worship, there are challenges, but we can still ask others to come and see, maybe watching one of our reflections from the comfort of their own home. Remembering that God chose us and is interested in the whole of our lives, not just the hour a week in church. We need to ask ourselves, if others come and see, what will they see in us in our everyday lives? Will they be welcome? Will they get a sense of God working in us to change our lives for the better? Will they get a sense of excitement that Jesus is at the centre of everything and want to share in it? I'll be honest, my early attempts at sharing the message were pretty clumsy. But over the years, I've prayed and I've asked God regularly to help me to be aware of opportunities to share the gospel, to give me the words to say, ears to listen, and the integrity I need to be taken seriously. I don't always get it right, but it gets easier. And it's such a privilege to share something so important. Fourthly, being a follower or a disciple of Jesus is about receiving peace and blessing from God. We see this in Jesus' response to Nathanael. Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you come to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Now Philip has said to come and see, but when Jesus talked of seeing, as in saw under the fig tree, he's used a different word in the Greek for see than Philip. Rather than physical sight, Jesus is speaking of spiritual perception. He could see into Nathaniel's heart and knew exactly the sort of person he was. Before Philip called you, suggests that Jesus knew him before this encounter, perhaps had always known him spiritually, just as God has always known us long before we came aware of him. There is a sense of peace in knowing that God has always been involved in our lives, even before we became aware of him. This shows us just as much about Christ as it does about Nathaniel. It reminds us of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who cares for and knows all his sheep by name. They know his voice and he will lay down his life for them. 
is not distant but relational and the fig tree itself is important here in the idea of peace and blessing. Three other places in the Bible use the image of the fig tree. 1 Kings 4.25, Micah 4.4 and Zechariah 3.10. Each time the image of the fig tree is used, sitting under the fig tree is a symbol of living in peace and blessing, which comes from an obedient relationship with God. So in today's passage, Nathaniel has known the peace and blessing from the obedience of a well-lived Jewish life and recognises who Jesus is. Rabbi, you're the son of God, you're the king of Israel. But here, Jesus is offering him far more than obedience to Jewish law could give him. As Jesus says, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. Now, I believe Jesus is praising Nathaniel for being an obedient Jew, but he's also calling Nathaniel to a greater sense of peace and blessing through relationship. The more we allow Jesus to be centre, the focus of our lives, the more we know peace. Each morning when I do the daily office, a mixture of prayer, praise and scripture, that's my special time when I can draw near and I have to say, even if it's difficult to do sometimes, I always feel the most amazing sense of peace afterwards and I'm prepared to face the day ahead. Nathaniel does indeed see greater things as a disciple, as he spends time in the company of Jesus, receives his teachings and witnesses healing and other miracles. But Jesus is talking of other greater things as well. If we look at verse 51, he then added, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Now this is a reference to Jacob's dream recorded in Genesis 28, 12. There Jacob dreamed of the ladder and the angels and heard the voice of God renew the covenant that God had made earlier to Abraham in Genesis 12 verses one to three. God promised to give Jacob the land on which he lay and to bless all the families of the earth in you and in your seed. Genesis 28 verse 14. As both God and human, Jesus would then be the ladder between heaven and earth. Not something they would see physically, like the transfiguration, but that they would have spiritual insight into Jesus' true nature and purpose for coming. This passage seems so simple that it's easy to skip past in favour of more exciting stories. But I love it because it's so rich in teaching us the nature of discipleship. Remember those, first, those four points. One, we did not choose God, God chose us. Two, we're called primarily to tell others the good news about Jesus. Three, we're not to be discouraged by the response we get from others but trust God in all things. We only sow the seed and God does the rest. And four, Jesus knows everything about us and understands our deepest needs. Our Saviour is calling us into a life of peace and blessing with God. And I pray that you and all those dear to you will know God's peace and blessing every day. Amen. Now, I know I have a habit of going on and on, and I'm trying to keep things short. But if you want something further to reflect on this week, why not look up the hymn, The Summons by John Bell, and reflect on it and pray around a verse each day. And now we're going to have our time of prayer. The response to the words, draw us closer, is closer to your heart, O God. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father, who knows us better than we know ourselves and understands our world. Lord, as you called the disciples, open our ears to your calling, our eyes to your presence, our hearts open to your love, that we may hear you, and hearing you may love you, and loving you may serve you. 
Make us worthy of that calling, fervent in all our prayer and worship, loving, faithful and honest in our lives, so the whole church shows what you are like. Draw us closer, closer to your heart, O oh God. We pray for the grace and the wisdom to care for this world we have given us our home, for perception in the difficult decisions and commitment to justice and peace. We especially ask for wisdom and compassion for all world leaders that they may be concerned with peace and the well-being of their nations rather than personal power or gain and that they will act as a good example to us all. Draw us closer, closer to your heart, O oh God. We pray for the homes of this community, whose hopes and struggles, sorrows and fears are already known to you. May each household be blessed as we pray, and may your love fill each life. Draw us closer, closer to your heart, O oh God. We pray for all who do not yet know you and all whose hearts are hardened with hate or weighed down with despair. May your light through their darkness and bring them hope and healing. We especially pray for the families and friends to those who have died. Comfort those who miss their physical presence and bring us all to share in the fullness of your life. Draw us closer closer to your heart, O oh God. Healing God, we remember at this time of pandemic, all those affected by COVID, those ill, those worrying about a loved one, those who have lost their jobs or have reduced hours and are struggling to pay their rent and put food on the table, the students struggling with university life and school children as well those in isolation and all those overwhelmed by the current situation and struggling with their mental health. We give thanks for all those working in hospitals and other medical settings, putting themselves and their families at risk to care for those who need it most. Many are physically exhausted and struggling to cope emotionally with the waves of suffering and the grief they're seeing. We pray for healing for the sick, strength and comfort for hospital workers and wisdom for those in society who are not taking the pandemic seriously. Help them to see that their actions may be putting others at risk. Draw us closer, closer to your heart, O oh God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you join me in the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing this next week, I pray that you'll all be safe and well. God bless.